Thank you so much for joining me for the Sanctuary Sunday School. Today's subject is Appearance of the Risen Lord. And the text can be found in the book of St. John in the 21st chapter. The curriculum that I use is the Union Gospel Press Bible series. Now, today we're talking about the third appearance that Jesus made to his disciples after his resurrection. And these appearances are so significant because it shows that Jesus was still there to encourage them, to comfort them, and to let them know that he would always be with them. We have to consider the fact that these were very trying times, even though Jesus' birth, his death, his burial, his resurrection had been prophesied for centuries, literally centuries. Still, when it all came to pass, it was a little bit confusing and it was also very frightening. So Jesus was there to, to comfort his disciples and be with them every step of the way through this transition process because they had a huge task ahead of them and that they would have to preach out the, the early church and establish and spread the word about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you think about it, that's all we really have. The Bible that we have, the New Testament, it is actually the disciples and the apostles' accounts of what happened. And that's how we know. And that's how we, where we get our information from. And that's what we live by today. So they had a huge, huge responsibility to deal with on top of dealing with the grief of losing their Lord and their Savior and losing Jesus Christ. So we see here in this lesson that there were disciples by the seashore. It was seven of them there. And Peter had emerged as somewhat of a leader after Jesus was crucified. And so he decided he was going fishing and they decided they were going to go fishing with him. Now, remember, Peter was a professional fisherman. He was a fisherman by trade. Remember, that's what he was doing when Jesus called him to be a disciple. He was fishing. So they went out and they took a boat out into the water and they fished and they fished all night long and they did not catch anything which was a little unusual because, again, Peter knew what he was doing, and so he should have known where the good spots were and what the good time would be to go fishing. So for him to be out there and not catch anything all night long was a bit peculiar. So we see that they went, and then as they were on the shore, they saw a figure, and they couldn't really identify the figure because they were still out kind of far. But the figure called out to them, and he asked them, okay, did you catch anything? And they told him no. So then he told them, OK, well, then drop your net on the right side of the boat. So pick your net up from the side because you have it on and move to the other side. And that's what they did. And when they moved that net, they caught an enormous amount of fish. Now, as we know, this figure that they saw standing on the shore was Jesus. And John recognized him and he told Peter, that's the Lord that just told us to move this net. And this is a very important lesson as well, because sometimes when you're working, especially when you're working for the Lord, the enemy will try to make you feel like you're wasting your time. And it was futile, especially when you're working with people or doing things and you look back and, and you may have need or you may even feel like you're in lack and you start to feel discouraged and you start to feel like, why am I doing this? Why even bother? And it's important that Jesus shows up for us in those times and he lets us know it's not in vain. Your living is not in vain. Your teaching is not in vain. Your working is not in vain. Your giving is not in vain. That Jesus will show up and he will bless you, but you can't give up. And even the fact that they went fishing showed that they were not idle, which is a very important thing because through times of uncertainty or times of grief, it's important not to just sit back and mope around. You've got to get up and you've got to do something. Even when God or even when Jesus called the disciples initially, they were all busy. Nobody was just sitting at home waiting on the Lord. And sometimes we speak about waiting on God or waiting on the Lord. Waiting on God does not mean sitting down doing nothing. Waiting, God, waiting on the Lord means that you are busy. Jesus himself said to occupy till I come. So we want to find ourselves always doing something, always being productive. Because think about it, had they not had the get up to go out on the water into the boat and then the stamina to stay in that boat all night, then Jesus could not have blessed them with the fish because in order for them to drag the net, 
and put the fish in the net and catch them, they had to at least be out in the boat. So that's a critical lesson for us. We need to be in a position of productivity. And when we're in that position, we, positions our, we position ourselves for Jesus to step in and to bless us. And that's exactly what he did. And so when John told Peter, that's the Lord standing on the shore, Peter, you know, he got his garment, he girded himself about, and he jumped in the water and he swam to the banks while the other disciples, they came back from the, uh, they came back to the shore, dragging the net with the fish. And when they made it to the shore, Jesus was there and he had already prepared fish and he invited them to come and to dine. And he told them to bring the fish that they had brought as well. And I love the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples, because even in this time after his resurrection, when it was he had a very short period, period of time, it was only 40 days from his resurrection until the time of his ascension. But Jesus took out time and he sat and he dined with them and he broke bread with them and he talked to them and he fellowshiped with them. And that is such an important thing, especially for us as leaders. You don't want to be the kind of leader who's lifted up and this is my special table over here for me and my family and the rest of you guys can't come in here because you're not at my level. No, we want to be, we want to have the same humility that Jesus had and we want to love each other because I say this all the time. Ministry is about service. Yes, I can stand here. I can teach. I can preach. I can do all of those things. But at the end of the day, if I have not rendered any service, to my fellow brother, I'm not even qualified to teach or present the word of the Lord because that's what ministry is all about. And Jesus, he took advantage of every opportunity that he could to serve his disciples. And that is such a great lesson and just for him to appear. And it is such a wonderful thing when Jesus appears to you. It can be at home while you're praying. It can be while you're studying your word. It can be while you're in the sanctuary at church. But when Jesus shows up, he just makes things better. And they were out there, like, again, they were fishing all night. Nothing was going on. Jesus showed up and they just had an abundance of fish. That's how it is. You know, we always say, Jesus, he shows up and he shows out. All we have to do is find ourselves in a position to receive what the Lord has for us. And we talk about the appearance of the risen Lord. This was not the last time that he appeared. He appeared several more times before he went to heaven. And as I said last week, it's such a beautiful thing to know that Jesus is mindful of us. We want to be like the disciples and have the mind to be obedient. When Jesus said to drop that net on the other side of the boat, that's what they did. And that is such an important step in your deliverance and receiving your blessings is the obedience. Because what if they had said, no, We've been out here all night. We're professionals. We know what we're doing. And moving the net from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat is not going to make any difference. And sometimes that's the attitude that we have. And when we're stubborn, when we're not obedient, when we lean to our own understanding, instead of just trusting God, sometimes we cut off our blessings and we delay our deliverance. When Jesus says, do something, do it. When Jesus says, move, You've got to move. And when you do that, he will manifest himself in such a way. And that's when John recognized that it was the Lord. When they dropped that net and that net began to overflow, John said, that's the Lord. And see, that's what God will do for you. Sometimes we think that we're doing things on our own and we think we've got it all figured out. But sometimes God has to let things kind of not work out the way that we expect them to so that we can recognize him and so that we can know. That's the Lord. And reminds me of one of our lessons we had many months ago about Gideon. Well, he told Gideon, he said, if I let you defeat your enemy with the amount of soldiers that you have right now, then the people might be able to say that they did it of their own strength and by their own might. But I'm going to drop you down so low to only 300 men that everybody, the entire world would know that nobody delivered me but the Lord. And so sometimes when we're going through things and it looks like we just can't make it and it looks like we just don't have enough, it feels like our efforts are futile and we just don't know what we're going to do. Sometimes we have to be in that place because Jesus only wants to just show up. 
and he wants to show us and he wants to show out and show us how powerful he is and to make us always understand and realize that without the Lord, we are nothing. Without him, we would fail. Without God, I would be nothing just like a ship without a sail. And that's what the disciples realized with Peter, with all of his fishing, his career fishing expertise, did not catch not one fish until the Lord decided it was time for him to catch that fish. And so this means that obedience to God or Jesus does not even, it's not limited to church or ministry or the Bible. It should be a part of our everyday life. We need to be acknowledging God in everything that we do. We have to take the Lord with us into the business, into the workplace, and let God bless us. When we are following God's direction and when we obey God, even in our business and on our jobs, we'll be blessed and we'll be able to have that same abundance, those fish, all of those fish that they had. It was one thing to just be able to eat fish. But if you're a fisherman by trade, you're selling these fish. This is a source of income. And see, this is where the enemy really, really, really wants to attack the people of God. He wants to make it look like, you know, these people out in the world, they're doing these things. They're being dishonest and they're making more money. They're doing better than I am. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to be saved. I'm struggling and it's just not fair. But we have got to trust God. And give your finances to the Lord. Give your business to the Lord. Give your job to the Lord. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. So if you trust the Lord, if you obey the Lord, he will meet every need that you have. So all we have to do is live right, fast, pray, and find ourselves productive and occupied until the Lord comes. And then we will find our blessings and our deliverance at the appearance of the risen Lord.